I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 23rd of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. And today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is going to be Thanksgiving. So this is a relaxing day at the office. We work, but we get done a little bit early. A lot of our clients start shutting down. It's great. Tomorrow we will be off or essentially off. And then Friday is a very light day going into the weekend. And this being Thanksgiving weekend means it is my daughter Liesl's birthday. She was born on Thanksgiving. Uh, 14 years ago or nearly and uh, we will be heading into Managua to celebrate for her birthday which is going to be very exciting but first we will be heading out to the beach tomorrow to celebrate Thanksgiving with the expat community there who's all getting together a huge group is getting together at Playa Roca for an expat day which should be a lot of fun and it'll be nice to have a whole bunch of Thanksgiving style food because that is stuff we really don't get like a whole range of comfort food kind of stuff that you don't get very much here we are looking forward to that other than that, today is pretty much just work and in the evening doing a bit of video work because I need to do a bit of catch up. I am a little bit behind, but it's not too bad. But we got a lot of things coming up this week, so I need to make sure I don't fall behind. Today, I have a topic that is extremely focused on a certain group of my audience. So I apologize to everyone. Today's topic is not going to apply to a lot of people. It, I can't make every topic apply to everyone. And I mean, just, I film in Nicaragua, so there's a lot of people for whom the channel is not a Nicaragua channel, it's a My Personal Life channel. For some people, it's a travel channel. For some people, it's a Nicaragua channel. Uh, today, we're gonna be talking about the American tax situation for expats. So this is very specific to just the American portion of my audience. So I'm really sorry that it doesn't apply to other people. And I know there's been a number of shorts made specifically about this, but it's a really important topic for the Americans and something that is missed a lot uh, and not very many people know about. So, uh, or don't know very, they, they think it doesn't apply to them or they've been told something that's wrong. And uh, I wanted to take a moment because misinformation was being spread on, the, on the, the comments in the channel, I wanted to step back and say, oh, let's, let's address this and actually make sure uh, that people are aware of where the resources are, who they can talk to, those kinds of things. Um, I think eventually this is part of a relocation service that needs to be added for services of people moving to Nicaragua or else, other, other elsewhere, wow, elsewhere in the region uh, because uh, when you're going to relocate, you have all of these things that come together. How am I going to find a house? How am I going to choose a house? Am I going to incorporate a business? Will I run a business? Do I invest in a third party? Do I invest in myself? Uh, does my house count towards an investment? Is my investment something that counts towards residency? There's all these questions and they're all part of a singular question quite often when you're moving. And so having uh, a single agency that can deal with the legal, the accounting, the residency, uh, that the real estate, the all those pieces, just finding a village in a neighborhood that you want, you need all that to come together and uh, nobody really offers that. So I think that that's probably something that's gonna have to happen in the future. But for now, that is my day. We're gonna go into the topic. If uh, you're not an American or this doesn't apply to you, please just let it run in the background and hit like anyway, it really helps. Uh, but if you're an American, you can do all those things. Please pay attention because this could be immensely valuable for you. Again, I'm gonna say this several times during the videos. I'm not an accountant, I'm not a lawyer, but I do have to deal with all this stuff for myself with moving and I'm gonna link all the IRS stuff. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna inject any opinion. I'm just gonna provide the information from the IRS. I'll provide the links. Don't even use them yourself. Take them to your accountant and be like, oh, this has a whole bunch of information that goes against what everyone always tells me. We should check this out, which is exactly what I did. And my accountant said, wow, people have been missing this. Uh, but it's really straightforward on the IRS site. All right, let's get right to it. I'm actually not gonna handle it here. I'm gonna throw this over to my cohort inside Scott, uh, who is at the computer and can read everything from there. So Scott, take it away. Hey, outside Scott, thanks for passing the ball over to me. We're gonna take this from inside. This is a little bit different today because I know this is only for the Americans and it's very specific, but this is some information that so many people are missing and a lot of Americans are either here in Nicaragua or looking to come to Nicaragua. And this applies everywhere. This is not a Nicaragua thing. Really quickly, Nicaragua does not tax your income. And of course, check with all the Nicaraguan authorities. I am not an authority here. I'm just telling you what I know. But Nicaragua does not tax you for your money that is earned somewhere else. They only tax you if you earn money here in Nicaragua. And Nicaragua just generally does not allow you to come here and work. So 
uh, the situation where you're going to be earning an income here is pretty unlikely, but that's the part that's Nicaragua specific. The rest of what we're talking about is very general, but it only applies to Americans. Most people from most countries, and I've already said this, I'm sure, most people from most countries are only taxed on their income from their country of residence uh, or their country of origin. Uh, for Americans, however, you are taxed based on your worldwide income, no matter where you live, no matter how long you're outside the United States. If you are an American, an American citizen, that is, uh, you will have to file and pay your taxes. That never changes. However, there is a thing called a foreign earned income exclusion, and this is a very large number. It is a very significant thing, and it heavily impacts nearly everyone who really lives abroad from the United States. But there are a lot of nuances to it, and we have to understand that. And a lot of people for whom it's a big impact, it is a big impact that they have to consider to fall short of the requirements and give it up or change their lives to meet the requirements. Some people just meet the requirements naturally, but they're not very many. It's uh, especially if you're a digital nomad or expat, the kind of expats we typically talk about here, you're often going to be someone who's very much on the line, again, if you're an American. So I'm gonna read, I'm actually using the IRS's website because this is something that, um, there's a lot of myths around this, and and I don't know why, but there's a lot of people who are very adamant about those myths, and will do a lot to mislead you. So I'm I'm going to actually use the IRS website, and I'm going to link down below the actual pages from the IRS. Very few accountants in the United States are actually familiar with this exclusion, uh, and so if you're not careful, you'll get someone who just says no, you don't qualify. Bring them this. I I did this with my own accountant, right? They said no, no, it's too hard, you can't do it. And I said, no, I clearly qualify. I read the rules. I made sure I did everything. I qualify, I'm sure. And they looked at the rules and said, absolutely, you qualify. I can't believe we didn't know. So read this. It is very straightforward. There's there's no tricks here. And, and the IRS is often tricky. This is not one of those situations. Again, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a lawyer. I'm reading the IRS information directly to you from the IRS. Take this to your accountant. The links are from the IRS. This is not a third party. This is not an interpretation of it just giving you this information. But it's really important and it could very likely totally change the lives of 90 to 95% of my American audience, which is probably about 50% of my overall audience. So for the rest of you, skip ahead, but this is some important stuff and it's gotta get out there. So okay. I just went through the entirety of the tax code as it pertains to the foreign earned income exclusion and my phone died, so every bit of it is lost. We're about to do it all again. I hope you guys appreciate the amount that I go through for you. And real quick, because this is such a big deal, if you would like to buy me a coffee, this would be a great time to do so. I'm going to put the link right here right now while you're thinking about it, because we're about to do a bunch of work for you, and it's going to save you a lot of money. So a couple of coffees would not go awry. Also, like and subscribe. Share with your friends on social media. And of course, you're going to have questions. Put them down below. Please don't troll me. This has already been trolled a lot for this particular one only helpful questions or input if you would. <laughs> I'm mostly joking, but I did get a bit of flack on this and realized how much of a myth this is and how much uh, I need to um, bring this information to you. So let's dive right in. Remember, I'm going to, we're starting back where I was. I'm going to read the IRS page, which I will link below, uh, just above the coffee link, uh, for foreign earned income exclusion. Now we're going to read right away. We're going to skip some parts that aren't very relevant. I'll try to mention them as best as I can. If you meet certain requirements, you may qualify for the foreign earned income exclusion, the foreign housing exclusion, and or the foreign housing deduction. Real quick, we're going to skip over the housing ones. If you think that applies to you, certainly look into it. It may. You may be able to go to more money, but we're just talking about the, the main exclusion here. To claim these benefits, you must have a foreign earned income. Your tax home must be in a foreign country, and you must be one of the following. One, a U.S. citizen who is a bona fide resident of a foreign country or countries for an uninterrupted period that includes an entire tax year. It probably does not apply to you, so we're going to gloss over that. If you feel that you apply or have questions about it, ask below. A U.S. resident alien. I'm going to stop right there. Number two, we're not even going to discuss. If you're a resident alien and you think you have some weird... Ask an accountant. I can't even discuss that one. Third one, this is what's important. A U.S. citizen or a U.S. resident alien who is physically present in a foreign country or countries for at least 330 full days during any period of 12 consecutive months. That's the important one. A lot of people who are on this channel 
either do qualify for that or could if they knew that they needed to. Uh, and that is where we are. We put in the effort to make sure we applied uh, our, our travel plans in such a way to make that apply to us. So that's what we do. And when I say we're only allowed to be in the United States for so many days a year, this is where it comes from. We're allowed to be there more, but not under the tax regime we're using, which is this exclusion. So just really important uh, to, to understand that that is a complex rule. It's simple to say, it's complex to follow. That is the rule we're following. All right, we're going to continue. They do have an interactive tax assistant tool to help you with this. Uh, if you are a U.S. citizen or a resident alien in the United States and you live abroad, you are taxed on your worldwide income, for those who don't know. However, you may qualify to exclude your foreign earnings from income up to an amount that is adjusted annually for inflation. In 2020, that was 107600 In 2021, 108700 In 2022, 112000 And the unprecedented cost of living increase for inflation for 2023 takes it to $120,000. In addition, you can exclude or deduct certain foreign housing amounts. It's really important. In addition, I don't know how much you get. I'm not going to go into it, but look into it. You may be able to get your housing deducted too, or some amount. You may also be entitled to exclude from foreign income the value of meals and lodging provided by your employer on their premises or for their convenience. However, such amounts are not foreign earned income. They're a separate thing. So just be aware, it gets more complex, but you might, might be able to do that. All right, other rule. I mean, that's the basics, right? Now they got some other rules. Foreign earned income. Basically, they're just defining this and there's an entire page just for this. I'm gonna link that below too. And we will do that after we go through these basics. Foreign earned in income. Foreign earned income means wages, salaries, professional fees, and other amounts paid to you for personal services rendered by you. It does not include amounts received for personal services provided to a corporation that represent a distribution of earnings and profits rather than reasonable compensation. That probably doesn't apply to anyone here, but in case you're getting unreasonable compensation, that that may not apply. Self-employment income. I'm not even gonna read this. If you're self-employed, you need an account and do it yourself. That's not for most people, and I certainly know I have no input there. Okay, not foreign earned income. Foreign earned income does not include the following amounts. Pay received as a military or civilian employee of the U.S. government or any of its agencies. If you're military working abroad, you probably know this already because you deal with this every day. Pay for services conducted in international waters or airspace, not a foreign country. This one's interesting because a lot of people will gloss over it and not realize that if you're on a boat in the middle of the water and you do work, that is not claimed by another country. You got to pay taxes in the U.S. for that. Payment received after the end of the tax year following the year in which the services that earned the income were performed. Basically, you need to be paid in the same tax year. Um, that one might be a little bit more complex. It might actually catch some people, but generally not a problem. But certainly you need to know. Pay otherwise excludable from income, such as the value of meals and lodging, uh, all the same stuff they already mentioned, just look into it. Pension or annuity payments, including social security benefits. That's important. A lot of people think of that as earned income, but it is not. It is what's classified as unearned income. It is technically an income, sort of, but it's unearned. It comes from gains. And so even though it is treated like an income, it's actually part of your gains, uh, which is sometimes classified as an income and sometimes is not. Uh, it depends where you're at. Nicaragua does not classify that as an income. The U.S. classified as, a, as an unearned income, which is sort of not an income. But this exclusion is for foreign earned income. So the earned is what makes that not qualify. Foreign tax home. You may have a foreign tax home. If your work is in a foreign country and you expect to be employed in the country, uh, in the foreign country for an indefinite rather than temporary period of time, you do not have a foreign tax home. If your abode remains in the United States, where you keep closer familial, economic, and personal ties, unless you work in a presidentially declared combat zone, is support of the okay, special case. Um, the foreign tax home is the actually the hardest part of this for some people who keep everything in the United States, all your family, all your friends, all your correspondence, your actual home, all that. If you're giving up a home and you only visit the United States, then your abode is wherever you are. This does not apply to any particular country, just not the United States. Uh, but if you keep an abode in the United States, you may have a situation where you don't quite qualify as having a tax home outside the United States. So that's something you need to be aware of. Um, and they have a tax home in a foreign country worksheet that you can go into and get more information on that. They then have a worksheet for actually figuring out the taxes. But these are the basics. Maintain your tax home outside the United States. Uh, don't try to 
include things that don't count. Like when we say your income, your salary, all that stuff, yes, that's excluded. Uh, but your your capital gains, your annuities, your social security, that stuff gets taxed normally. Keep in mind those things are taxed at a different rate already. And the fact that they're not income is already accounted for. Um, and a, a real quick analysis on this, the reason that unearned income is not excluded the way the earned income is, is because it is still working. In the, it's your money working for you. That money's in the United States. So it's actually in the United States doing the work. It's money doing the work, but it's a funny thing. That is that is where that comes from. All right, so that's that's all the basic rules. Now we're going to go into the specifics of the foreign earned income because this is where the people who are trying to mislead you or the people who are just repeating myths that they've heard or where accountants trying to get out of doing the work, this is where they try to skew things by pretending foreign means something it doesn't. Pretty much the earned piece and the income piece, they're pretty straightforward. The foreign piece is where uh, people will say, no, it means, and they'll come up with some definition that sounds reasonable, but it's a made-up definition of their own not the actual definition. So the IRS is super clear on this and includes some amazing examples that really clear up any ambiguity you may have thought that there was. The foreign earned income exclusion, the foreign housing exclusion, and the foreign house deduction are based on foreign earned income for this purpose. Foreign earned income is income you receive for services you perform in a foreign country in a period during which your tax home is in a foreign country and you meet either the bona fide or the physical presence test. Earned income is pay for personal services performed, such as wages, salary, or professional fees. The list below, we're going to go through it, uh, classifies many types of income into three categories. The column-headed variable income list income that may fall into the earned income category, the unearned income category, or partly into both. We're going to start with that. I have no input on this. This is just the list. Variable income could be business profits, royalties, rents, scholarships, and fellowships. Earned income, this is the stuff that's excluded. Salaries and wages, commissions, bonuses, professional fees, and tips. Unearned income, this is stuff that you have not earned, so it clearly should be just obvious that it doesn't count for, for this particular tax credit. Dividends, interest, capital gains, gambling winnings, alimony, social security benefits, pensions, and annuities. Now, not very many people, even retirees from the United States, have very many of these, uh, such as pensions and annuities. Uh, Social Security, they do have, and we often think of those things differently. When we make capital gains, get dividends from our stocks or whatever, we don't think of that as income normally. People don't talk about it that way. So that you get your $120,000 for 2023 uh, of income tax-free, no, most people would never expect dividends to count for that. I don't know. I did have someone who thought it was weird that we didn't mention pensions and annuities and Social Security. All of those are a form of gains, so they're not earned income. They're not really income. They sort of are, and yes, that you can make a reasonable argument that they would be called, called income, but they're not what you're getting paid. Nobody thinks of them that way, and if they do, they need to stop. They are part of your dividends and other capital gains, interest gained on accounts and stuff. Nothing wrong with those things. They're all great things, but they're, they're part of an investment, not part of your work, and that's what this is about. Um, it is important to note that uh, not very many people have annuities and pensions. These are very rare things. In the 1950s, they were common. Today, they are really uncommon. Even like teachers and uh, public servants, pensions have mostly gone away. 401ks and other mechanisms have taken over. So this doesn't apply to a lot of people, but the dividends and stuff does. But people really already know that dividends are not normal earned income. There's a section about non-cash income. I'm not going to go in there. It's all the same lodging stuff. Allowances and reimbursements, same thing. Amounts not included in foreign earned income. Um, reimbursements for expenses you incur on behalf of your employer. Value of meals and lodging. Again, pensions and annuities, including Social Security. Notice that they, they keep lumping, right? They say these things. This thing's one of them, right? Social Security is an annuity. Um, payment you receive as an employee of the U.S. government. Amounts included uh, because of your employer's contribution to a non-exempt employee trust. Uh, payments received after the end of the year. All the same things we already talked about, just covering it again. Earned and unearned income. Earned income was defined earlier as pay for personal services performed. For other information on specific types of income, such as sole proprietorships, partnerships, corporations, stock options, royalties, rents, and fringe benefits, there's a whole section in publication 54 about that. I'm not going to talk about it now. Source of earned income. So this is where it really gets interesting. This is the spot, it's very specifically, where people will try to manipulate the terms. But the IRS is super clear here, and I love that they give no ambiguity and examples just in case someone tries to pull a fast one on you. 
which they did in our comments, right? Someone tried to convince people, pretending they had some information. They already knew this was the myth. We already established that this was the case. And they came in and said, no, it's not a myth. It's absolutely true. Claimed we were redefining it. Claimed the IRS was redefining it. The source of your earned income is the place where you perform the services for which you receive the income. Foreign earned income is income you receive for performing personal services in a foreign country. Where or how you are paid has no effect on the source of the income. For example, income you receive for work done in France is income from a foreign source even if the income is paid directly to your bank account in the United States and your employer is in New York City. If you receive a specific amount for work done in the United States, you must report that amount to the U.S. as a U.S. source income. Okay, so this next section I'm not going to go into. It is simply a very long, four-paragraph long way to calculate what if you qualified in every other way but spent some of your year actually physically working in the United States. If you do that, be aware you, there is more complication. Go read that stuff. But they're very clear. If you're living outside the United States, if you're not working inside the United States, your income is foreign because you are foreign. That's where the money's being generated. And that qualifies here. And they give the great example of working in France paid in the U.S. because that is always when people regurgitate the myth that everyone should know, anyone who's looked into it, every accountant should know, is a myth, right? They always regurgitate exactly copying that example, but saying the opposite of the IRS. They say, if you worked in France but are paid in the U.S., that's not foreign earned. The IRS is like, no, that's exactly what we mean. That is foreign earned. There's a lot of reasons behind all of this, but the important thing is that you're, this is a really significant way to increase your potential value of your earnings, right? Your money goes a lot farther, especially if you're nearing that 120,000 mark. And notice they didn't mention anything about married couples. My understanding, and again, check this with an accountant, check everything with an accountant, take these links to an accountant. Um, but because of the way it's done and I, everything I've always seen says, if you are a married couple or filing independently, it doesn't matter, you get 120,000 per person not combined. Um, and so this can be a very large number depending on your situation. And the taxes on those numbers can be quite large if you don't have this exclusion. So if you do have this exclusion, especially if you start getting the housing allowances and, and stuff, um, can be really significant. And when you then consider, you know, so a, a take home, if you're earning 120,000 in the US, you're easily going to pay 30 to $40,000 in taxes, your take home may only be $80,000. Changing a take home from 80,000 to 120,000 is like getting a 50% raise, no questions asked, just automatic. And then with the purchasing power parity here, if you were to come here to a place like Nicaragua, you're looking at an, uh, doubling that money again. So if you were making 120,000 as your salary in the US, it would feel simply from the tax change to be the same as if you were making 180,000 in the US. If you were to take that 180,000 equivalent and use it with the purchasing power parity, it would make it feel more like $360,000 in the US. Like these numbers get really big, really fast. So uh, this is important and it affects a lot of people or it could affect a lot of people if they knew about it and applied themselves to making it work for them, something you can probably do. If you're spending half your time in the US and half your time abroad, it's not gonna work for you. But if you're really close to that 11 month line, Seriously, look into this. Consider whether putting in some effort to making sure you qualify for this doesn't make you way more wealthy than you would otherwise be. And if you're someplace like here in Nicaragua, this is a really big deal for the locals. Because if you're making 30% more than you were before, that's disposable income that very likely you're going to spend on the economy. Whether it's buying more food, hiring someone uh, to work on your staff whatever, you're probably going to put at least a significant portion of that back into the local economy. And that's where you can make a huge difference. So definitely look into this. It's huge. I really apologize to all the non-Americans who are on here and are like, this is so boring. Why? Who cares? Some of you I know may be like, oh my gosh, America's crazy. I can't believe taxes are like this. And this is one of the easiest tax things you'll ever see. But I felt this was really important, both because I think it's a lot of information that people need to have and there's so many myths around it, and people have been aggressively pushing those myths in our comments, um, and I don't want that to be able to continue. Um, I want everyone to have the links, because I can't link in, I was able to, I mean, I can uh, quote, but I can't link to show that the IRS is actually stating clear as day what it says, so that makes it easy for people to say, no, it doesn't really say that he's making that up. I wanted to make sure this is here so we could show this video with the links, and say there's no ambiguity, There's this is black and white, you get these things on your earned income, 
um, and and foreign earned income is not this self-defining thing that anybody who can just go make up. Um, and the thing that I think may be happening, and we know this is true in a lot of other areas, there's a lot of people here in Nicaragua um, and, and in similar situations that prey very heavily on the expat community, especially retirees. And they want to act like they have special information that other people don't have. They want to provide expensive accounting services or whatever. And if they can get in and discredit this kind of information, they can draw people into, oh, no, you got to come use my tax services or whatever. And then whether they're getting kickbacks or simply don't know the laws or they've been giving bad advice in the past and now they can't correct it without being called out and potentially getting sued, um, they've got to do something. I don't know what what drives people to try to mislead people on their taxes. This benefits no one directly, but if they're involved in any kind of um, real estate or taxing or legal stuff where they're selling that advice uh, and, and want to be able to provide this either as a surprise or have to hide that they haven't been providing this, um, they may be trying to mislead people in a public space to cover up for that. So be aware, be very wary. That's why I'm linking the IRS and just reading the site, right? Don't get the opinion of someone get something official, take it to someone and hold them accountable. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe, comments below, ask your questions. Let's delve into this for sure. Um, and uh, share with anyone you know who's looking at moving. It doesn't matter if they're looking to move to Nicaragua or just anywhere in the world. Let them know if they're American that this unbelievable resource exists and they may be far more financially capable of retiring or moving abroad or whatever than they ever imagined. Uh, also, real quickly, I'm gonna mention, if you're interested in the social security portion, social security is taxable only if it meets an additional qualification above that of the uh, foreign earned income exclusion. It's a smaller number, but it's an additional step you have to take if you earn social security income and your total income goes above a certain threshold, then you have to pay a certain amount of taxes on that social security. It starts at only 50%. The top tier is only 85%. It's not 85% of the total amount. That's 85% of the normal rate. So if you normally had to pay 30%, you'd only have to pay whatever that is, 26% or something. Uh, and only at the top level. And there's lots of circumstances where social security is still untaxed or barely taxed. So just because it's excluded here doesn't mean that, I mean, this is all just free money. Right. Don't look at any of this as like, oh, no, there's this thing that we know. This is all free money. Read the rules. And we covered pretty extensively everything they had there. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.